What's up Guardians and welcome to my first ever Trials of Osiris gameplay video. In this video I'm going to be sharing some of the tips and strategies that uh, I used with my fire team in order to rack up a total of four flawless runs over the course of the weekend. So let's get right into this. Now obviously team communication is a huge part of winning these matches. Uh, let me give you a solid example. So in this next breakdown, you're going to have me, this is the very beginning of a round, me and my friend Battle Ready pushing forward. Now he snipes one, you can see in the kill feed, he's sniped one, and he also saw one move left. So he calls out one outside. So I know I'm going against someone here. I jump up over, uh, over that little down. archway and drop down. Now, he went down, but he says that the third guy is no shields. So I decide to go ahead and push, because I know I have another teammate backing me up. And sure enough, this guy was easy pickings. So team communication made it so that that assault there was very easy. You're definitely going to want to grab special ammo at the end of every round, whenever you get the chance to do so. So here's another ideal scenario. We start out this round with one of us sniping down the center alleyway. I'm looking up to the left to make sure that no one comes through the center tunnel way to flank us on the left. And one teammate moves around the right in a flanking pattern. Manigator gets a snipe down the center, calls out that there's another, so we team fire for the second kill. And now note Clawman's on the right with a vantage point on the final remaining opponent. He calls out his location, and we push forward to keep him from uh, getting a revive. All enemies down. One of the most important things that can help you win matches in the Trials of Osiris is knowing when to push an advantage and knowing when to play defensively. Here I know I have a rocket left. I want to go ahead and kill this guy, even though he's going to revive his teammate, which is clear. So I kill the one guy. I push the second because he's disoriented. He also doesn't know where my uh, teammates are at that point. And then we push the final guy. I know he has heavy and I might go down, but I just want to prime him for my teammates so that he's easier to kill. You definitely want to take advantage of any time your opponents pinch themselves in a tight spot or a corner. So here we have them tucked away in this corner. I get one kill. I go ahead and back up because I start taking damage. And then the second guy goes down. I figure he's going to get the revive back here. Push forward. We go ahead and uh, snipe this one guy. That leaves one in a corner and we all just push him. We know we have the advantage so we go ahead and push it just to wrap that match up as quickly as possible. And then again, sometimes you'll find that your opponents will pinch themselves up in these uh, hallways up here in the, the top middle of the map. So we would uh, kind of flank, have one of us flank and two push from the opposite side. And then that forces them to try and pick who they're going to engage. So someone is going to have their back to one of our, our players. So you want to try and pinch people. Anytime they put themselves in a spot like that, you can pinch them from opposite sides. Now priming people with grenades is huge as well, like you saw me do there. And then this guy's going to go for the revive and we just go ahead and push him hard so that he can't do that. Anytime you get two of them down, you definitely want to push as hard as you can with all three of your, your teammates because it's very unlikely that he's going to be able to go one on three. Now sometimes stuff like this is going to happen. Here I am, uh, last guardian standing, and they have uh, only two guys up right now but then they're about to get a revive and uh, there it goes so now it's uh, one on three and so you're gonna have to try and figure out how you can handle this situation most likely you're gonna die if we're being real if these are uh, good players then you're most likely gonna die so here's what you want to try and do is try and isolate uh, individual players and kill them as quickly as possible so I get this kill because this guy was by himself. I decided to turn around and engage him. Now it's one on two. Now I'm looking at getting a revive. So I push up here to this uh, teammate here. Go ahead and get the snipe across. Get the revive and then decide to go ahead and push this last guy before he has a chance to revive any of his teammates. So luckily they weren't coordinated enough to come at me three on one. And I was able to take advantage of that and just win three one-on-one -on -one engagements, which made that much easier for me. So try to isolate your opponents as much as possible if you get outnumbered. Pushing your super and uh, timing it right is also a big thing. I decided to pop it right here at the beginning of the match, and curiously that guy was AFK. 
but you want to know how to use your super well. So for titans, if you're a striker, then you're going to want to save your super to shut down roaming supers uh, on your opponent's team. So wait for a blade dancer to come charge your heavy on the heavy round, or wait for a golden gun, or wait for a sun singer, and you can shut them down quickly to make sure that they don't get to wipe your team and their super is a waste. So make sure you're pushing your super at the right times. All enemies have been eliminated. Also make sure that a lot of thought goes into your equipment. I chose to go with firebolt grenades. This guy was primed already with low health and you can see clearly there the firebolt grenade seeks him out and finishes the kill off without even putting me in danger. I don't have to go around the corner and pursue him at all. Now I also decided to roll with the void fang vestments uh, for this portion of uh, Trials of Osiris and you'll see why. It's because whenever I go down I want to be able to come up with two firebolt grenades. So I use both my firebolts here to get the assist, drop this guy to make sure we're down to uh, two enemies, but now things start to go downhill quick. I got stuck and I'm waiting for a revive. Now it's one on one, my teammate decides to pick me up and I come up with two grenades already cooled down because of the void fang vestments. It makes it so that I can kill one of them with a grenade and prime the other one for my teammate. You also want to pick up on your opponent's patterns. One of the things that made this match easy is that this guy would always come back here and snipe from behind that rock. So I knew exactly where to look and uh, we knew where to push. The other thing is that the other two guys would stick together in the high side of the back room. And so again, I know exactly where to look and I'm expecting him to be there. And sure enough, the final guy is up here as well. So we just go ahead and push him and uh, made for some easy kills because you're never asking yourself I wonder where these guys are or what they're going to do. Again in this match we went up against some opponents who always jumped back behind this little half wall and sniped from back there. So I get the one kill. I know his other two teammates are probably up to the left because that's where they tended to go. Sure enough here's one. I don't finish them off so I decide you know what I'm going to go ahead and flank. I know that they're going to be up there on those stairs or behind the half wall Sure enough, I look here, here's this guy again behind this half wall, so I go ahead and pursue him and trust that my teammates are pushing at the same time. They make this guy back off so we can get the revive and then finish off their team. Easy peasy. So make sure that you're picking up on player patterns. You also don't want to repeat your own patterns uh, excessively. Now, one of the things that you also want to be sure that you're doing is covering the revive. Now. You also want to be careful about this. The first thing you should do before a match even starts, the very first thing you should do is check and see what your opponents are using. So you know that if they're Sun Singers, there's a good uh, p potential for them to be self-resing. So make sure that you can, you can guard their orbs without standing right on top of them. So if you want to deter a revive, stand by the orb, but not so close that if a, one of them self reses you don't have time to react. Make sure that you give yourself time to react and know who went down and what class they are so that you can rule that out as a possibility or you know for a fact that he very well could self-revive. So at the beginning of every match, check your competition out, look at what they're using because that can be hugely important because you know uh, to, to look out for roaming supers, you know that if there's a striker titan, he can shut down your roaming supers. One of the things that we ran into a lot is we would see teams where all of them are using final round snipers. And so with that, we just knew, all right, let's just get geared up for some close quarters combat and push them really, really hard because it's hard to react when you have three snipers. It's hard to react to a team that gets up in your drill fast and hard. So they may take one of you down when you're on the push, but then they have to switch to their primaries and the amount of time it takes them to do that can be just the advantage that you need to drop two or all of them. This guy backed himself in a corner. You never want to do that in the Trials of Osiris. Not at all. Now curiously I found that the weapon balancing wasn't nearly as big as an issue as I anticipated it to be. I really expected the Trials of Osiris to be uh, a, a blink shotgun fest or final round snipers. So I, ex I expected to see lots of thorns and last words and I expected to see lots of shotguns, particularly Felwinter's Lot. And while I did see those things, I found myself over the course of all the matches I played, which was quite a bit, I never found myself once saying, "Ah, oh, stupid blink shotgun got me again. You know, I never really had to uh, 
complain or moan too much about weapon imbalances because frankly just the way that this whole thing is set up with the elimination uh, style by the way that guy there was going to push our heavy with a super you definitely want to anticipate that so don't just have your back to your enemy spawn location when the heavy comes up because he was going to push our heavy with his super and uh, that could make for a, uh, a really bad round really really fast so make sure you're all looking out for that because guys will get bold enough to do that but anyways, uh, back to what I was uh, talking about. The weapon imbalances weren't nearly as prominent. I think it's just because of the elimination style, but the pressure of having to win and the pressure of not wanting to die keeps people from getting super aggressive with their blinks and their shotguns, and instead they're gonna play a little bit more defensively because they're legitimately afraid to die. You get punished for dying so much more than you do in control or skirmish or whatever, any other type of crucible gameplay. So because of that, people played a lot more conservatively, and also because of the emphasis on team fire and communication, you're forced really to deal with these weapons in a, in a logical way. So make sure that you understand what your opponent is using. If they're rolling with the last word like I was, because I'm really comfortable with it, and obviously I wanted to win matches, so uh, the thing is, a lot of opponents just bull rushed me, which is certainly the, the, the wrong decision to make when your opponent is using the last word, because this weapon will shred things at close range. So they should have kept their distance. If someone's using the last word, mark who they are. Be like, okay, red uh, hunter in a red cloak. If I see him, don't pursue him. Don't push him hard in close quarters. Keep your distance and pick him off. Maybe team fire him or pinch him in a corner with a teammate. So make sure you're communicating. Make sure you know what your opponent is using because that can dictate how you handle the situation. So if you don't take the time to look at your opponents, you're doing yourself a huge disservice at the beginning of the match. And also don't be afraid to switch up your loadout if the opponent is using something that you can't counter with what you currently have equipped. I ended up for several matches switching to the uh, Aegis of the Kel pulse rifle, and you'll see that in some of these clips if you haven't already. I use that pulse rifle because it can shred guys in close quarters, but it, it's a little bit more forgiving than the last word if I have more than one opponent to take on at a time. Now obviously survivability is a huge factor in winning these matches. You obviously don't want to die. So here you got me flashing red. I'm going to use my vertical space just to make sure that when he comes around the corner he's not looking right at me. Now I go ahead and get the revive because my health was low but I managed to stay alive. Go ahead and push this guy since my teammate's already looking at him, but then we get flanked, so don't forget to watch your flanks. This guy came up from behind. That could have been a bad deal for us. Now here you're going to have a situation where I've got a teammate down on the right. There's no way I can get to him. I get the double kill. Now pause here. He's back to the right. I want the revive, but I decide it's, it's two on one here. I just don't want him to get the revive, so I'm going to push him as hard as I can and manage to get the kill to wrap up the match. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you guys. Now expect that down the road in the future, I'm going to be bringing you some specific play-by-play -play ways to approach different scenarios. And uh, I'll try and keep these videos shorter, but I know that, hey, this is the first week and I had a lot of footage to show you guys. So I hope these, uh, these tips are helpful for you. Hopefully you made it to the lighthouse. If not, then um, maybe some of these things that you see in this video and then also check out some other PVPers videos and uh, you can pick up some some pretty neat tricks that'll help you out hopefully get you to the lighthouse so you can get that adept level uh, weapons so all right thanks for stopping by guys we'll catch you later